what does it mean to own a television station? I mean, all of us on YouTube have had to ask that at some point, right? Like, YouTube is the largest television network in the world. I think it's just eclipsed Netflix as the thing that people go to watch when they sit down on their couches. So, with me being a broadcast designer, um, like, a broadcast designer is somebody who creates graphics specifically for TV. I created stuff for TV shows, for documentaries, for ads. If it's been on terrestrial TV, I've probably created a version of it. But for me, now that I'm here with my own TV station, I'm kind of failing. I'm failing because I keep forgetting that the battle to create anything is an ongoing one. It's not a war you can just win. Jay Alto just released a, a great video reminding me of the book The War of Art and its concept of resistance. You never completely overcome this resistance to create. You merely learn how to work around it and become better with recognising it when it pops up. I wanted to make this video about Unreal Engine's broadcast features, which have kind of not gotten as much publicity as I think they deserve. Um, partly because they are, you know, dedicated mainly towards people who work at places like ESPN and Fox every day, so maybe not everybody is able to pick up the language. But like, YouTube is the biggest TV station in the world, so the connection seems obvious to me. Like, I have a YouTube channel, Unreal Engine has these amazing broadcast features, and I should talk about it. But the reason I haven't is because I, I feel like I'm a bit crap. I mean, that's, that's what my brain tells me, you know what I mean? Like, I call myself a designer, but I'm not happy with all the design that's on my YouTube channel. Uh, and who am I to try and teach people? Like, I don't even know C++. How do I overcome that? I really enjoy learning things, but it also holds me back. Like when I want to make a new video, often I'll want to learn about what I'm about to try and teach. And I try and learn it in as much detail as possible and I get ideas in my head, ideas of like, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could put this in the video? The thing is, learning everything inside Unreal is kind of impossible. Like, unless you're Chris Murphy or Alex Stevens, like, it's too large. It's changing all the time, and I can't keep up, I'm, I'm old. So this video is probably the first, and I guess a series of learning vlogs, where I'll still try and structure them around a single topic or a single scene, but I want my brand to be one of exploring rather than just teaching. This design around me is, is part of that. I'm trying to pull apart another person's design created by a legend named Danny Yount. Now his name might not be familiar to you, but he's done everything from like the titles for TV shows like Six Feet Under, all the way to films like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Oblivion and Iron Man. One of his underappreciated pieces was a promo for the series called Through the Wormhole. And you know, I don't have access to Morgan Freeman, but I've tried to take the warehouse set, see if I can recreate that lighting and that feeling inside Unreal. Everything around me, I've tried to design with real-time presentation in mind. So me talking to you now, I'm recording that, I'm editing it, and I'm going to be playing it back through a media plate in real time. And it's going to be playing out of Unreal and recording on a separate machine. Uh, what this means is that I am now playing back a presentation of sorts where I can hit this button and the camera moves to show you something new. And when we're finished here, I can press the button again and we will move through to this area. It's using the rundown system inside Unreal, which is one of those broadcast features that I mentioned that got introduced in 5.4. I've created a level with animation in a sequencer and I've created a rundown asset that allows me to step through this sequence and it stops wherever I've added these marks. 
I did have to sync up the audio in post, but that can be done at a software or hardware level depending on the setup you have, meaning you could do this live. But I haven't even gotten to what makes it come alive. What makes this magical is that all of the animation inside Unreal can be set up to be timeless. Its animation is not controlled by the sequencer, but by the internal tick of the engine. So even though the camera stopped, you can give it some keyframeless animation so that it keeps moving around, noise effects on Niagara particles, keyframeless animators in the MoGraph section. There's a lot of things that you can do to add life to the world without actually animating it inside sequencer. Of course, like all of this could be pre-rendered, but like, I feel like that's missing the point of the broadcast systems a little bit. Live television and sports in particular are one of the healthiest parts of traditional media. And they employ more than a few broadcast designers that I'm friends with. So I feel like that side of motion design is not going to go away. It's not a fad, it's not a trend. Uh, this kind of real-time interactivity is what I'm really interested in seeing what will happen in the future. I'm still learning. As I mentioned, this is a journey. So underneath the video, there is a like button. There's a subscribe button. And make sure notifications are turned on so you can come along with me. See you in the next one.